Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining me on this Tuesday morning for a hot cup of coffee and a hot cup of the Word of God. We're in the Torah portion of Vayechai, which means he lived, and our Sidra today is Genesis chapter 48, verses 17 through 22, but let's pick it up in verse 21. Israel, that is Jacob, then said to Joseph, you see that I'm dying. But God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your ancestors, the promised land. Uh, verse 22, moreover, I'm giving you Shechem. Shechem means shoulder ridge. It means a share. It's talking about the city of Shechem. And he says, moreover, I'm giving you Shechem more than to your brothers. So I'm giving you an extra poor, an, an extra share, an extra portion, an extra inheritance above and beyond your brothers. So I'm giving you Shechem. And he says, I captured it from the Emori with my sword and my bow. So Shechem was a trophy. Shechem was a victory. Shechem was something to be remembered as a glorious event and occasion in the ancestry, a defeat of the enemy. And so in our own lives, we are to treasure those things that happened in our family and happened in our ancestry and retell the stories of, of, of the past victories and the way, the miraculous way that God has provided. Like one story that I am proud of, of my grandfather, and I tell it with pride, is when he got saved. And my grandfather was a great man, a good man, but he was a drunk. Um, he, he, was a, he was a happy drunk. He wasn't one of these mean drunks. He was a functional alcoholic, but he was irresponsible with the money and a lot of times would just gamble it away for booze. And one night he was uh, locked up, kind of like Otis Campbell on Mayberry, uh, in order to sober up for the night. And while he was there in the drunk tank, <laughs> uh, he said that the Lord, that Yeshua, Jesus, came into his cell and visited him. Vi visually, he saw Jesus and he says, Henry, that was my grandfather's name. He says, Henry, he says, this is the last time I'm coming to you. He says, if you don't receive me now, then this will be your fate. And he said that the floor split open and my grandfather looked down into hell. And my grandfather says, Lord, you know that I love you, but I can't stop drinking. If you take the thirst of alcohol away from me, I will serve you the rest of my life. And Yeshua, the Lord, Jesus said, consider it done. And from that time on, my grandfather was no longer a drunk. He never touched a, a drop of alcohol ever again. And he served the Lord. I've got one of his Bibles, and the edges of the pages are smudged because his old, calloused working hands would take every spare moment of his day, and he would read through the scriptures. And it was a well-worn, well-loved Bible. And I remember stories of my grandfather and his character. It's something to be proud of, something to be victorious about, something to, to, to retell the other generations to emulate. I remember, uh, you know, my, my grandfather married my grandmother, who was a Cherokee, and uh, they were often ridiculed because of their interracial marriage. And uh, I remember that uh, one time my grandfather was a carpenter and he was working on a site with a group of men who had a little black boy that carried the tools around. And come lunchtime, he says, come on on home, guys. My, my wife will fix us a great lunch. So they all started going to the house. A little black boy followed him. They said, uh-uh, you stay out here on the porch. My grandfather said, either he comes in or no one comes in. He is just as much welcome here as you. So he stood up for that poor little black boy because racism was a huge thing back then. I'm so proud of that story. And then sometimes, you know, he would uh, on the side sharpen saws for people to earn a little bit of extra money. And sometimes people wouldn't pay him, take advantage of his kindness. And my grandmother gets so mad, says, you need to go get that money from those people. He says, ah, oh, mammy, that's what he called my grandma. He said, you know, he said, maybe they needed that saw more than I needed the money for sharpening that saw. So my grandfather was very gracious. And so he is somebody that I look up to. And so here Shechem is being passed down from Jacob to, to Joseph as a trophy, as something to be remembered, as something to emulate about the victories that God has provided in our lives. And our family history is something that we can be proud of and build upon. And like I said yesterday, if you do have a family history you can't be proud of, Start today by making your family history, starting with you, of something that you can be proud of. So your children and grandchildren will have something to look back on and stories to tell of you, of God and his greatness in your life. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.